The three most likely ways in which an acquisitions entrepreneur is to fail. FYI, I share two bonus traps that cause acquisitions entrepreneurs to fail at the end of the video. So be sure to stick around and watch the whole video so that you don't step into one of these traps and keep yourself from being successful. The three ways that the aspiring deal maker gets messed up, gets tripped up, fails to do their first acquisition and really take a company off. I have three core ways and I actually have a bonus idea that just popped in my head that I'll try to remember to get to as well. But I'm sharing this video for you firstly just because I figure if you understand the main areas in which an acquisition entrepreneur stumbles over themselves, then you'll be aware of those areas and you can avoid them. Pretty simple logic. And so I really wanted to shoot this video for you. Let's get right into it. The first way in which an acquisitions entrepreneur will fail to do a deal is by simply putting giving up. And this one is so obvious, yet it's so abundant. I know this because in doing these types of videos and in really engaging in, in the conversation of doing deals and buying businesses or buying real estate, I get DMs and messages every single day in my inboxes, you know, Instagram, which by the way, follow me on Instagram, or you know, in my email inbox or on LinkedIn or all these different platforms. And so often I'll check in two, three, four months later with an entrepreneur and you know, I, I gave up or I stopped or it was tough, it was tough sledding or, or whatever. And well, that's a failure in my book. And so that's the first way. You know, if you take yourself out of the race, then it's pretty tough to get the gold medal at the end. Case in point. The second way in which an acquisitions, acquisitions entrepreneur really gets tripped up, and this is a blunt one, but it's real. It's by having a personal bankruptcy before you get your first deal done. I think too many individuals go into this game of wanting to do deals because they're sold a dream of you don't need to use your own money and anyone can do this and you gotta go for it and you only live once so take a swing and they go for it but they run out of money and they bang out their credit not in a good way before they get the first deal done they have a cash flow problem on the personal level a personal cash flow problem where they either are forced into bankruptcy or they need to pick up a job at Wendy's now because otherwise I'm gonna go into personal bankruptcy or I'm going to lose my home and, and this type of thing. So that's just the reality of the situation. It's why I talk about if you have funds saved up before you jump in, that's better than if you don't and why I recommend that if you're broke as a joke, don't start right now and there's no shame in being broke. I've been broke. Trust me, I know firsthand exactly what it looks like to have $84.14 in your bank account. I know what it's like when you have an overdraft email that comes into your email, you know, on your phone that says, hey look, you, uh, you're now in the negative in your checking account and you have to move the $414 in, you know, from savings over to checking to cover for that because you had your, ins your car insurance bill that came in and you weren't prepared for it and you know, your paycheck was gonna come four days later or what have you. Like, I know what it's like to not have a lot of money. So I'm not trying to shame people of, oh, you know, you don't have a lot of money, you know, you poor people. No. My point is, is your personal financial situation can keep you from getting a deal done. If you have to go back to Wendy's or to wherever to, to make your nine to five, then that's gonna keep you from doing deals. And then the third way that really people just fail, for lack of a better word, is a lack of simple communication ability. The lack of communication ability. The inability to write in proper grammar. The inability to look somebody in the eye and shake their hand. Now, I had another idea I shared and I wanna talk about it real quick. The other way that people just screw up is by simply put not taking it seriously enough. And I know this just seems flabbergasting, like you're gonna bet your whole life in attempt to create real wealth through buying businesses or buying real estate, and yet you're gonna just not take it that seriously and you're gonna show up in a, in a checkered plaid suit or you're gonna show up wearing sweatpants or you're gonna make some crude joke at a terrible time or you're gonna miss the meeting because you drank too much the night before. You know, these things seem so absurd, but I've heard stories, stories that would blow your mind. 
And then lastly, before you go, and firstly, first of all, if you're liking this video, thumbs it up. I, I really think this video is valuable for you because if you understand where people screw up, it can keep you from doing the same and it can help you do a first successful deal. And then lastly, the one other thing I would watch out for once you buy a first business, because I know you're gonna be successful if you commit to the process, it's the business's cash flow. We talked earlier about how if you have a personal bankruptcy, or if you run dry on cash in your personal life, that'll keep you from getting your first deal done. Once somebody buys a business, the easiest way to screw this thing up is to not manage your cash flow, to not monitor your bank account like a hawk. I go in and check out my bank accounts for my different businesses basically every single day. I'm in there four, five, six, sometimes seven days a week. I know exactly how much cash I have in this account, in this account, in this account, in this account. I know exactly when I'm paying this bill. I know exactly when I'm paying that bill. I know exactly when this much is gonna come in from rent. I know exactly how much came in from this type of a sale or from that type of a sale. You need to know your cash flows. Cash is the lifeblood of a business. And so this is the number one area I believe that once an acquisitions entrepreneur actually gets into the game, they're most likely to slip up. Because remember, when you're making acquisitions, you are using leverage, AKA debt. You have a big old mortgage payment. You're not operating with these huge margins where you can just be flippant and easygoing and casual and, eh, you know, I can pay the next six months of this type of a bill off early because I don't have a debt payment. I don't have expenses. I have all this cash in the bank. Look, chances are you're running a lean operation in those first six months to first 12 months of taking over a new business, especially if it's your first acquisition. So monitor your cash with intense focus. And with that, Hey, thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you've liked this video, and obviously you've liked this somewhat, you're still here, thumbs the thing up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more deal-making content. We talk all the time about how to buy real estate or how to buy businesses. This is my passion, as you can clearly see, and I'd love to have you here on the YouTube channel. And hey, by the way, share in the comments below. What have you learned? What have you liked? What would you like me to talk about next? Please share those comments below, and I will talk to you in the next video.